Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's our pleasure this week to have the director of the CRM, uh, Luc Vinet, from uh, the CRM and the Department of Physics at the DM. And Luc kindly agreed to give this seminar with uh, a week notice, so this is really great. And as Luc was telling us, we'll hear about orthogonal polynomials in particular. The title is uh, Sliak in Algebras, ASCII Wilson Polynomials, and Hoyne Operators. So uh, let's our distinguished guest start. Merci, Luc. Thank you. A pleasure. So, uh, uh, so you have the title there. Uh, it's work uh, that have been done uh, that has been done with some of my usual collaborators from Japan, the Tsujimoto, and normally from Beijing, uh, Jedanov, but who was in a prolonged stay in Montreal. And uh, and two uh, finishing uh, PhD students, uh, Geoffroy Bergeron and Julien Gaborio. So as I was saying in French, the the topic is really about the connection between these three subjects: Sliane and algebras, ASCII Wilson polynomials, and Hoyne operators. The focus will be very much on special functions and their algebraic description. Um, and uh, so the upshot, the thing to, you know, the, the message that you, I wish you to take home already is that um, the degenerate, I will really be talking about degenerate Scliannian algebra is really the structure, the basic fundamental structure, which is behind the theory of ascii wilson polynomials, which as you probably know, are sitting at the top of the scheme of hypergeometric polynomials that uh, has been structured by uh, Degaski. So that's our goal. The outline, I'll start by maybe the first three, four uh, items. I'll introduce the actors or the ingredients. So I'll give you some background on Sklianian algebras background on the what are the ASCII polynomials, what is the ASCII-Wilson algebra, and then I'll introduce some objects that uh, maybe uh, my friend uh, Alexei and I are the only one to care about, these q para raka polynomials, so we're trying to sell these polynomials, but one of the points of my talk will be that they seem to have found their home through representation of Sklianian algebras. And then in the remaining sections, I'll be telling you how these ingredients mix. How is the ASCII-Wilson operator related to the three-dimensional Sklianian algebra? How a rather old work by Kalnin and Miller actually amounted before the letter, if I may, to the construction of representation of the Sklianian algebra. And then this is where I'll make the connection with my uh, exotic polynomials. And I will conclude by wrapping this in the talking, talking about Hoyne operators. Okay, so that's our, that's our plan. So let's start with some background. The uh, Sklianian algebra uh, was introduced way back in uh, 83 in a, a very uh, famous paper by Sklianin. And this had to do with the study of the basic equations of inverse quantum inverse scattering methods. One of these equations, of course, is the Young-Baxter equation, and the other is the uh, RLL equation. And Sklianin understood to study these equations and, you know, out of his study, an algebra emerge, which now bears his name. And this algebra and its uh, presentation involves four generators. So one is labeled by zero, the other by lambda, with lambda taking values one, two, three. And the relations are quadratic, are homogeneously quadratic. And you, you have them there. So you see the commutators between these four generators. You take lambda mu and nu to be a cyclic permutation of one, two, three. And the, the structure constants are these uh, j mu nu. And, and these obey some constraints. 
they must satisfy this relation here. And if uh, and you can show that if uh, J1, you know, one, two, three are not zero, uh, this is solved by a relation of that form. And then you can parameterize these uh, structure constant in terms of uh, Jacobi theta functions. The Casimir, the, the algebra is two Casimirs, uh, which are given by these expressions. This would, you know, if you uh, look at this algebra uh, as it I as I've defined it, you would be in the realm of elliptic uh, functions, and this is not what I'll be doing. I'll sorry to disappoint you. If this is what you were expecting, I'll be looking at degenerations of uh, this uh, this algebra, and uh, the the generation to the trigonometric limit was obtained by Goski and Zabrodin. And uh, we'll call it uh, Sklianin Algebra 4. OK, so it's a degeneration with four elements. The, the brutal uh, contraction of the Sklianin Algebra, and this is found in uh, Sklianin's paper, is to give the quantum algebra, the, you know, the quantum deformation of SL2. But uh, if you are more delicate in your uh, limit, you attain the, this trigonometric uh, limit that I'll talk about. And then you can go down and you can reach the rational degeneration. This has been done by uh, Smirnov also. Now, the, the, uh, the topic of Sklianin algebras is uh, generating a lot of um, activity. Uh, and there's actually a large body of mathematical work, algebraic work, uh, regarding algebras with three gener uh, generators. These uh, degenerate algebras uh, uh, of the Sklianin type, but with only three generators. And the reason for that uh, is that, well, I summarized this briefly, but they are the, the, the uh, critical uh, block of the art and shelter um, algebras. So, you know, quadratic or polynomial algebras with nice property. Uh, and uh, the, the key, the program that was started by Artin was to classify these regular algebras as a gen non commutative generalization of the commutative polynomial rings. And as I was saying, the, the key object in the classifications are those Kleanian algebra with three generators. And they happen to be related with Calabi Yao algebra, uh, which uh, derive from these are algebras that derive from potential. They are special cases of potential algebras. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, the, the relation uh, that the generators obey uh, can be derived from a potential where the potential is a sum of cyclic words in terms of these generators. All right. so. That's just some background of why there's been a, a lot of activity. And uh, Chelsea Walton has looked also in this classification at deformed Sliannian algebra. So I told you that these algebras are homogeneous, but you can add, you know, non homogeneous term. And you can see that the terms in green here uh, amount to uh, or give you deformed algebras. So, so the, the part. Uh, the, the part which is sorry, the part which is here would be the would be the uh, relations, the general relations for a three-dimensional Sklianin algebra. But you can also add these terms, which you see are first order in the generators. Okay, so this is what I was I was indicating already. So the the inter intervenes in the determination of the. Um, moduli space of vacua in supersymmetric n equal four yang mills theory with the potential phi. And, and the determination of this moduli space can be uh, identified or it amounts to the classification of the finite dimensional 
irreducible representation of the algebras with such potential power. Okay, and then uh, other algebrists, Yudu and uh, Shkarin, have also uh, examined generalized, what they call generalized to Yanin algebras, where uh, you introduce some parameters. This, this is uh, homogeneously quadratic, but instead of, you see, for the Slyanin algebra, you would have A equal to one, uh, B and C equal to the same um, quantity Q, and uh, then alpha would be this expression, the beta gamma would be zero. So again, this is another generalized uh, direction. Okay, so, so much for introducing the algebra. So you, you have it, right? So I've defined for you this Sklianin algebra with three generators, the, the three generator U, V, and Y satisfy these relations with the specifications that are given by these choices. And I'll come uh, to a little later to uh, Sklianin four. So far so good? Okay, another little uh, tranche of, uh, you know, well-known things. What are the ASCII-Wilson polynomials? And what is the ASCII-Wilson algebra? Well, the polynomials, they are a Q hypergeometric operator. Um, and so if you're not familiar, you know, this phi, so I'm assuming you've, you know the uh, generalized um, Gauss hypergeometric series where you have sim ratios of Pokhammer symbols. Well, phi is the analog of what would be f when q is equal to one. And instead of having Pokhammer symbol, you have q uh, Pokhammer symbols. So you, there's a q shift. And uh, so the, uh, the ASCII-Wilson polynomials are, are given by a four phi tree. So there are four parameters in the denominators. Uh, you see here q to the minus n, so it will truncate, the series will truncate, uh, so it is a polynomial, and the variable uh, arises as one of the, the uh, numerator coefficients. You have z and z inverse, so the, the variable is actually the sum, or you can imagine them to be defined on the circle. So these are the objects, uh, and they are the bispectral. In other words, they are orthogonal polynomials, so they satisfy a three-term recurrence relation, but in addition, they obey a Q-difference equation, uh, so they are eigenfunctions of this operator L. I put the Q here uh, and the parameters A, B, C, D. It's important to appreciate that these polynomials depend on four parameters, A, B, C, D. And this is the, uh, the eigenvalue. So the, and this L, which is referred to as the ASCII-Wilson operator. Now I've written it in a slightly more generalized form where I'm allowing for Q to be at a certain power. So I could take a base, which is Q to the R. It, this will, uh, I will need LQ and LQ square in, in the following. And you see, that this Wilson, ASCII Wilson operator is a Q shift operator, comes there, you have T plus to the R. So T plus shifts the variable or dilates, if you wish, the variable by Q minus by Q inverse. And of course, if you put it to the power R, you have Q plus or minus R. The uh, functions in front of these two shifts operator T plus and T minus are here. And so because you, you have a T plus and a T minus, it's a second order uh, type of different Q difference operator. Okay, so thing to remember, the ASCII polynomials obey this difference equation and together with the uh, recurrence relation they obey, this defines a bispectral problem. Now, let me introduce the ASCII-Wilson algebra. As you know, there's a long tradition in studying the uh, algebraic interpretation of uh, orthogonal polynomials. 
it's very pertinent in uh, mathematical physics context because we, we describe symmetries with, with such algebras. And it is the uh, seminal work of uh, Zhidanov to have seen how to encode the bispectrality of these polynomial in an algebra that he has named after the name of these polynomials. And the idea somehow is simple, is you take for, as a realization of the algebra, you start there, uh, you pick one uh, generator to be realized by the uh, ASCII-Wilson operator, and the other in the same representation to be realized by the recurrence operator. And then the issue is to see how this can close, what are the relations that these uh, generators would obey. And these relations take the following form. So you have it there. You take these two generators, you take their Q commutator. The Q there means this. It gives you a third generator. And then by repeating the Q commutators, you see that it closes. And the remarkable thing is that if you now uh, consider this algebra ab abstractly and you work out its representation theory, it generates all the properties of the ascii wilson polynomials. So in other words, if you have uh, ascii wilson polynomials, you have this algebra, but it also if you have this algebra, the ascii wilson polynomials are lurking. Good. Second topic, my exotic Q para Raka polynomials. So le let me introduce the, so, uh, okay, what is P and P star is just a normalization. Uh, at some point, uh, you see I, P N, so P N star, I will sometimes use the tilde or sometimes the P. And as you can see, it's just a matter of normalization between these two polynomials. So uh, the normalized ascii wilson polynomials obey as any good orthogonal polynomials, this three-term recurrence relation, where the recurrence coefficients are given by these expressions. Now they're a bit complicated. Now, these are uh, form an infinite family. So if I want to truncate, to, to get a finite dimensional family of polynomial, well, I need to effect a, a truncation and I need to op obtain a set of just n plus one orthogonal polynomial. And this will happen if this product, if I renormalize the recurrence relation, it's easy to see that if this condition for a big a given big N, if A big N, C big N plus one is equal to zero, it means that at some point you will truncate the recurrence relation because of the value that the recurrence coefficient will take at after big N, the polynomials will become zero. And this is how we obtain the Q Raka polynomial. Because if you look at it, uh, the, the pro this product, you see that if one minus a b q to the n, for instance, is zero. Uh, this would truncate, this would make this condition realize, and it would give you q raka polynomials. And as a matter of fact, you can obtain this q raka polynomial for any of those conditions, which occur, you know, here, 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 uh, here uh, and uh, okay, and also from C. Okay. But there's one other possibility. It's that the product uh, of uh, A, B, C, D uh, be one minus A, B, C, D, uh, Q to the N minus one be equal to zero. So, okay, a priori, this would seem to work, uh, but uh, you see that, um, so the, why? Because I have this term here. So this would annihilate this term and it would seem to truncate. But you see, when you look at the denominator, you have Q to the two N, right? So if I impose this condition, because uh, I, I have a power two here, you immediately see that around the middle, you know, the, 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 from between zero and big N, 
uh, the uh, denominators will become zero and the, the coefficients will blow up. Well, it so happens, and so this is why these polynomials have not really been considered. But you can tune things so as to have a finite limit uh, when uh, you uh, try to perform this condition. And I'll just briefly indicate, so I hope you, you're following me, that there would be a prior, that you can, we could also a priori obtain a finite set of polynomials by this condition, but there's a singularity in the recurrence coefficient around the middle. Okay, but uh, there's a parameterization that allows to obtain well-defined polynomials. And okay, you need to treat the even and odd uh, possibilities differently, but let's take the odd case. So in that case, you relate B and D to A and C in the following way. Recall that J is just the related to the, the number of polynomials I have. And I introduce this parameter t that will go to zero. So uh, with this choice, a, b, c, d is given by this. And when t goes to zero, I get my condition. This is what I want to impose, OK? And if you pick, make this choice of parameterization, there are only two uh, recurrence coefficient where e1 and e2 arise. It's aj and cj plus one. And when you take the limit, the limit is well-defined. I've given it to for you. And really because the e1 and e2 only occur, occur in these forms, there's only one parameter which is introduced. It's alpha because this is just one minus alpha. And so we can th therefore, as I said, define the recurrence coefficient and so on and define these polynomials. And this is what, leads to these Q para raka polynomials, which uh, with Jean-Michel Lemay and uh, Jedanov, we have uh, characterized uh, not, not so long ago. It was part of Jean-Michel's thesis. Their property is that they are orthogonal on a bilattice, which is form of two S.K. Wilson uh, grids. So the, so the points on which they are orthogonal are these, X to S and X to S plus one, so you see, these are two SK grids uh, parameterized by the parameter A, this one, and this one by C. Okay, now we have our, uh, our actors. Let, let's uh, move to the Stoyanian algebra. Uh, sorry, they, can I make a question? Yes. Uh, what, what's the polynomial you get when Q goes to one? Do you get some? Yeah, we get, we've, we've character, they also are, they are called the, uh, para raka polynomials, and they are obtained as a truncation of the Wilson polynomials. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, but this Kleenian algebra is really a, a you know quantum algebra, so this is why these are the polynomials that occur. But uh, I'll mention a little uh, in the conclusion that we've also recovered the, the polynomials you were asking about. Okay, so. You remember Sklianin tree, the three-dimensional Sklianin algebra that has been really mu much studied by Chelsea Walton and many other people, Paul Smith and so on. So uh, you can realize it in terms of the following Q difference operator. So this is just the, the Q difference operator and you, you have these two additional operators and these uh, operators verify this algebra. And these, these are the, uh, the defining relations of this uh, Stoyanin uh, SK, SKA tree, okay? So this is simple, the, the right-hand side is zero and you see the quadratic uh, term here. If you, all right, the Casimir element is, is given by this. So now I, I want to indicate that this is connected to the ascii wilson operator. First connection, first simple connection is to consider a linear combination, right? So, so you just need to keep in mind, to bear in mind that I have these three Q difference operator. You take a linear combination, uh, it, will, it will be a, you know, a Q shift operator involving T plus and T minus. 
And as a matter of fact, you, you realize that it's uh, basically the uh, ASCII-Wilson operator with two of the parameters set equal and two Q a half. Okay, that's interesting. Now, suppose I take another, so you see alpha and beta and gamma. So gamma somehow is an irrelevant factor because I can always scale with the common uh, factor. So I take another linear combination with parameters delta and epsilon. And uh, it's a simple thing to just to observe that if I take the product of two such operators, I get now the full ASCII-Wilson operator with four parameters, A, B, C, D, but the basis is square because I've, I've taken the quadratic expression in the generators. So this is interesting because I found in so doing a factorization of the ASCII-Wilson operator, okay? And it more or less, uh, moreover, it, the, this ASCII-Wilson operator factorizes in terms of two linear combination of uh, operators that realizes the Splianin, uh, the three-dimensional Splianin algebra. Also, I can make the, the point that this is the most general quadratic expression in those generators. And this result had been observed by uh, Goski and Zabrodin in 93. Okay, so I, we can clean things up a little bit by getting rid of the gamma and the zeta. We observed that it was just a scale factor. And uh, you get this formula where you know, I, I have a one. So square, the, the product of these two gives you the Askey-Wilson operator. But of course, this Askey-Wilson operator is symmetric in the exchange of the parameters. And I can exchange the pair CD and the pair AB and I can do that in, with respect to the parameter, it's not so important to follow all the details, but you can see how it would go. So you see here, delta bar, I replace the pair AB by the pair CD. So delta bar, which would be occurring here is now CD, this will be my first parameter. And the, the pair with, uh, which was uh, occurring, what, what was CD here involved a Q, and so I put the Q here and I, and this is bound just by doing this uh, symmetry permutation. Uh, it's bound to give me the same operator. And so it follows that I will have a relation of that kind that the product of these two operators with these parameters minus the product of these two uh, with these modified parameters is basically going to give me the Casimir operator of the algebra. So this you can easily check only abstractly in the algebra or given the presentation that we have used, or this is also a way of packaging uh, abstractly the relation of Stoyanin uh, tree. They will come back. This will, this is a, glimpse of a well-known relation by Reigns. All right, now let me uh, introduce the four-dimensional uh, degenerate CN in algebra and, and indicate to you how it's related to the contiguity and ladder operators of the Askey-Wilson polynomial. And this is where I'll bring uh, to bear some work of uh, Kalnins and Miller that I had always found intriguing. So the four-dimensional degenerate Sliannin algebra, so four-dimensional, four so it has four generators, A, B, C, D. The relations are here. Okay, so you see it's uh, quadratic. Um, and uh, you, okay, that, that, that is the algebra. It has two Casimir elements, Omega zero, omega one. And obviously, if uh, I just focus on the uh, subalgebra generated by A, C, and D, A, C, and D, so just you forget this one. This is simply the Slyanin tree 
that uh, we were working with up to now. So we were adding B here okay, with this relation. Now, Gursky and Zabrodin have provided also for us a realization of this algebra. And so we already know what A, D, and C, because they are uh, realizing our uh, three-dimensional algebra. So we need B. And B is this a bit messy operator. You see, it's again a Q-shift operator. Uh, well, you look at it. Uh, we'll come back to comment more. On, on the form of this algebra. In this representation or in this realization, the Casimir uh, take the following uh, values. Omega zero is one and uh, omega one is given by this expression of mu, which characterizes the representation. Mu, you see, occurs in this expression, occurs here and there, but in particular in B. It's a parameter. It's parameter of the representation. Let me tell you now about this, uh, what Cannons and Miller were doing in 89. They, they, their, their idea, they really, what they wanted to do was to derive, to obtain a simple derivation of the weight for the S.K. Wilson polynomial, which is a bit complicated. And their idea was to introduce contiguity and ladder operators. So my claim, I think I've already, uh, given you the punch, is that they were actually uh, already then, maybe six years after the introduction by Slyanin of his algebra, they were constructing the representation of the degenerate Slyanin algebra. But before, in fact, Gorski and Zabrodin had found the, de de the degenerate form of the algebra. So le let's review that. So they introduced this operator mu, okay? So it has its specific form, but again, you see it's a Q shift. It's a Q difference operator involved T plus, T minus on these functions. And they show, it's not very difficult, that if you act with this operator on the uh, ASCII-Wilson polynomial, it is a contiguity operator. It gives you, again, this a polynomial of the same degree, but the parameters are modified, you see, by A and B by multiplication by Q inverse and C and D multiplication by Q. And similarly, there's the, uh, the, the operator that goes in the other direction. If you start with this operator with, you know, the, the parameters modified, you can go back with this mu where you replace, you know, B, C, D by, by this expression and it will give this action. It will bring you back to the, uh, the original one. And the point of uh, Miller and of Callens and Miller is that they say, well, I will try to, I will obtain the wave function against which the polynomials are orthogonal by, by you know, obtaining it so that mu uh, th this operator that goes in the reverse direction is the uh, emission conjugate of this mu. And they, so they proceed to, to do that. But this is not our point here. We will uh, instead focus on the fact that, uh, of course, the product of these two operators is such that the ascii wilson polynomials are eigenfunctions of it. Because one, you know, the map goes from one polynomial to the contiguity deformed polynomial and the other brings it back. And uh, then it's a simple matter to see that this mu is nothing else than our m, the m we had introduced before. And the, the other, the mu star is the m with the change parameters. And so, uh, we see that you know, it's a simple observation that these contiguity operator, they belong to the realization of the three-dimensional Slyanian algebra. And the factorization of the ASCII-Wilson is just the one that we have previously discussed. Okay, so this is just making the observation that this discussion takes place in the framework of the Slyanian algebra. 
Now, Callens and Miller, they also introduced the uh, uh, finite derivative, the, the shifted derivative, which we call y. And then now, since uh, you now have the, uh, the weight, you can compute the adjoint of this operator. And they find this t star to be given by this expression. OK, the, the computation. And the action of these uh, operators, tau and tau star, now, this is a Q derivative, a shifted derivative, so it will lower the degree. So it, you see it acts, it lowers the degree, it modifies also the parameter, but you go from Pn to n minus one, and this will be a raising operator. It goes, it's the adjoint, so it go from n minus one to n. The key point, once you, once you, you read this operator from the uh, Kalnins Miller paper, the key point is that you can see that tau star is a linear combination of the generators of the four dimensional Suyanin algebra. And uh, so here's the expression. I will uh, denote by EI, the elementary symmetric functions in the uh, constants, A, B, C, D. And uh, so you see that tau star, so the, okay, the Hermitian conjugate of the, uh, shifted derivative uh, with respect to the ascii wilson measure is given by a linear combination of a, b, c, d, the generators of the degenerate Kleanin algebra with these uh, coefficients here. And uh, you see uh, q nu, uh, because recall that a nu arose, I'm always working here when I'm dealing with polynomials and the representation. And so I'm using the parameter that is present in the realization of B. And in order to make it work, to connect this tau star to this linear combination, I need to make this identification. I need to relate quite naturally, I should say, the representation parameter to the, uh, this product of the Askey-Wilson param uh, polynomial parameters. Okay, so, and, and you, you are reminded that, uh, well, new arose in, uh, in this fashion in the Casimir omega one for the uh, realization that I'm using. Okay, are you keeping with me? So now let, let me reflect a little bit on, on representations. These contiguity operator or ladder operators, mu, mu star, tau, tau star, well, we see that uh, these are linear combination of A, C, D, these two. Tau is uh, C itself, and uh, tau star involves B. So they are an equivalent basis for the representation of the four dimensional Sklianian algebra. And then what we conclude from that is that the ASCII-Wilson polynomials, they span a representation space for this uh, four-dimensional Sklianin algebra. And well, the action of the generators is uh, I've provided, I've given you the formula. So it's completely determined. Up to this point, the representation though is uh, infinite dimensional. The, the, the degree can be anything we want. Can, can we construct a finite dimensional representation? Well, I remind you what B, what the operator B is. To, to get a finite dimensional representation, I should demand that at some point it will truncate. And uh, then you, you can just, uh, find out what should happen by uh, taking the limit, uh, contracting to the limit uh, where uh, z goes to infinity, in which case x, which is z plus z inverse, is basically z. And in this case, uh, demanding that this becomes zero, you see that you need to require that n is related to this parameter nu in this fashion. Okay, but you will recall, and I know it's a lot of details, but 
you will recall that it, in making the identification of this operator tau star uh, as belonging as follows in the Sleenian algebra, I needed to establish this connection between the new that occurs in B and the parameters A, B, C, D that are here. I needed to have this connection. And now to truncate uh, my representation, I see that I need to have that. Given that I already had this identification, I get just bringing the two together that I have this relation. And this is the truncation condition that we had identified for the Q para Raka polynomials. And so the summary of that is that the Q para Raka polynomials, so polynomials that basically nobody knows about because well, we've been the only one talking about those, but quite remarkably, they form a finite dimensional representation space for this degenerate Sleenian algebra. A uh, few more comments. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Winder had identified the structure relations for the, uh, the Askey-Wilson polynomial. And in fact, it turns out that it is provided by this operator tau star, even though Kuhnwinder did not refer to uh, the paper of Cannons and Miller, what it happens is that if you act with tau star on the polynomials, but I, and here I will point out that it's in the base Q. Before I was working with base Q square, and this is a little subtlety. Okay, you, you find that uh, it, it's a combination, you keep the same parameters of Pn plus one and Pn minus one. And you also observe that this tau star is just a commutator of the Askey-Wilson operator with X. And remember when we construct the, um, so this, keep that in mind for later, this commutator is a Hoyne operator. Okay, so this is why it has this action. We'll, we'll come back. And finally, the, the Raines relation, which has been discussed by Kornwinder again and Rosengren, you can also take these operators to generate but on their own, the representation of this uh, degenerate Sleenian algebra, because very, in a way very similar to the formula that I gave you for the three-dimensional one, you can check that you have this relation here. As a matter of fact, you have it also for the elliptic version of the algebra. So, uh, and this embodies all the defining relation of the Sleenian algebra. I point out that this is the trigonometric version of the formula given by Reigns. And uh, uh, you know, why is it so that this uh, encapsulates the, you know, the uh, defining relation? Well, you will remember that it's a linear combination of A, B, C, D. And so you have a quadratic relation here between uh, these to involving all the parameters and it gives you all the relations you want. Okay, so uh, what are the points? Uh, the uh, Sleenian, the degenerate four-dimensional Sleenian algebra, I hope I've convinced you that is really at the heart of the theory of the Askey-Wilson polynomial. The uh, uh, Askey-Wilson operator is just a quadratic expression in the generators that realize this algebra. And you see, and we found a factorized form. And when you're dealing with the factorized form, you, this speaks about raising and lowering operator. And these raising properties are basically lead you to the definition of Hoyne operators. And this is my last topic. So I, I'll introduce what is I call S Hoyn operator and the relation with the Hoyn Askey Wilson operator. Uh, so what are these S Hoyn operators? Well, S stands for special or Sleenian, and uh, but let before I come to this these special operators, let me first 
talk generally about Hoyne operators. When you are in a bispectral context, there's two ways to introduce Hoyne operators. One is through a raising operator, raising property, pardon me. These are the operators that raise by one, the degree of a generic polynomial on a grid. Or the other possibility is to use the concept of algebraic Hoyne operator, which is the most general bilinear uh, expression in the bispectral operators. And you, so you can apply that to the ASCII-Wilson uh, bispectral context. And if you, uh, so if you are dealing with the second order, you posit a second order difference operator in a certain grid, in particular, the ASCII-Wilson grid, whether you use this approach or this approach, you get the same result. They, they coincide, these definitions are consistent. And the operators you would find will be an operator of that form. Again, a Q difference operator, but well, because it's quadratic, you, you see it's a, most, a bilinear expression, you, you, you have squares. The S and, and the operators here involve a, uh, an arbitrary six order degree polynomials. Pi i is a polynomial of degree i in x. The special Oin operators are the same operators, same quadratic operators, except that you omit the diagonal term. So it, in some sense, you could say that these are first order uh, difference operators. Okay, so now I will consider those operators. They, and it's in that sense that th these operators we will see lead to the Sklianin algebra. So the Sklianin algebra is some square root, if you want, of the ASCII-Wilson algebra. This is one message that I'm trying to drive. And they also emerge using these op OIN operator, which are kind of first order, because if I multiply this by T, you know, T minus, I will just get, I will get a one, one here and I'll get T minus square, okay? All right, so let's uh, use the raising condition. Let's uh, on the polynomial. So, so I'll define this operator. It has that form, but I'll say it's a special Hoyne operator if it raises by one when acting on a polynomial of degree N. It will give me a, generic polynomial P tilde. So it's easy. What happens is that if you just take uh, this polynomial to be a degree zero constant and uh, just a linear function, this fixes this operator S. It fixes, namely it fixes, it's the function that occur in the definition of the operator. And it's simple to see that you will have five parameters because you act on a constant, it gives you a linear function, this gives you two, and it, you act on a, con, on a linear functions, it raises, so you get something quadratic, it gives you three more. So three plus two is five, and uh, two of those will stabilize, two will raise, and you can have only one lower ring when you're asking on the uh, uh, first order term, because on the constant, you cannot go lower. So a basis, and then the, the, no more parameters, it's consistent as you proceed. Okay, so a basis for the, uh, of these special Hoyne operators is five dimensional. It will, I give it to you in all its glory, but there will be one lowering operator, two stabilizing operators and two raising operators. So these are the type of operators that we've become familiar with, right? So you see that many look uh, alike. So the observation is that those, three operators that stabilize polynomials of degree n, well, they generate the Sklianin algebra of three dimension. You use the little change of basis that go from what we were using to those that we've defined here. And the ASCII-Wilson poly polynomial uh, is therefore a quadratic expression in these special OIN operators, right? Driving my message that uh, these are the basic uh, ingredients out of which to build the uh, ASCII-Wilson uh, elements. And then the, the uh, four-dimensional algebra is realized by a linear combination of these operators again, because if I combine 
the raising one, I will get what occurs in B. And then, so what's the connection with the Oynaski Wilson operator? Well, uh, and, and these operators turn out to be uh, of interest. It's been, uh, we've introduced them, but they also occur in uh, reflection algebra uh, as a, shown by uh, Rodrigo Pimenta and Pascal Bazeillac, who will, Rodrigo will be giving the seminar soon. So you, the, you can show that this uh, Oynaski Wilson operator will be the most general quadratic combination of the Oyn, S Oyn operator that raise degree by one at most, meaning that you exclude uh, the product of two raising operators because it would raise by more than one. And then you identify this combination with this Q Oynaski Wilson that you see, I've told you, you can write, maybe here I'm going a bit fast, but I told you that one way of obtaining a Oyn operator is to take the most general bilinear expression in the bispectral operator of the problem. The bispectral operator are the ASCII-Wilson operator and multiplication by X. So I take the anti-commutator, the commutator and linear expression. This is the most general bilinear in the bispectral operator. And you can show that this expression here will coincide with that just by matching coefficient. And you can then relate to my remark that the commutator of L with X. So the uh, structure relation of Kuhnwinder is just a special OIN operator because it's o it only has this parameter non-zero. Well, on time, I'm uh, about to wrap up. So uh, uh, let me just summarize what are the, the message. The, you know, the, the main message is that uh, with respect to the, the Sklianin, uh, the degenerate Sklianin algebra embodies the theory of ASCII-Wilson polynomial and of the ASCII-Wilson algebra. The ASCII-Wilson operator, and so the elements of that is that the ASCII-Wilson operator is a product of two elements in the uh, three-dimensional Sklianin algebra. The contiguity and ladder operator of the ASCII-Wilson polynomials realize they form a basis for the uh, four-dimensional Sklianin algebra. Quite interesting for, for us, the Q Pararaka polynomials, they form a basis for the finite dimensional representation of the four-dimensional Sklianin algebra. And then you can bring the, the ideas of Hoyne operators to bear on that because you can introduce these operators and you can obtain all the Sklianin uh, generators from them and then also recover, put the Oynaski Wilson operator uh, in this framework as quadratic expressions in the S Oyn operators. So this, uh, this uh, study brings a, a number of suggestions that we could possibly get at Sklianin type algebras using models that are derived from uh, the, the notion of uh, special Hoyne operator. You, you see, in defining my special Hoyne operators without telling you really, I've set it, when I wrote this expression, I picked a uh, first order operator, which was defined in terms of this T plus, and those were Q shifts. So I've, I had picked the ASCII-Wilson as my lattice because I had Q shift and Q and inverse Q shift. So, but if the, the, I can just uh, carry on these ideas using different lattices and it should be bound to generate other type of Sklianin algebras. And we've already proven that to be true. Taking for instance, just a quadratic lattice so S square or a constant S square plus uh, you, you get my drift. And this in fact uh, leads to the rational degenerate Sklianin algebra. 
And the polynomial story is a bit simpler. We, instead of uh, getting the ASCII-Wilson polynomials, we get the Wilson polynomial. Instead of getting the Q-Pararaka polynomial, we get the, para, the straight Pararaka when looking for a finite dimensional representation. And even more simple, you can uh, look at linear grids or Q linear lattice. And, uh, and again, you get interesting quadratic algebras. Interestingly, they had correspondence with algebra is saying that they have found them otherwise. And the, uh, the polynomials are the continuous Han polynomials or the, for the linear lattice or the big Q Jacobi polynomial for the Q linear lattice. And when you look for finite dimensional representation, you get to the, the para or Q para versions of the craft polynomial. And on that, I will thank you very much for your attention. The, the, these uh, results have, can be found in two papers um, that were put on archive in May and August. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Luc, for this nice talk and overview. Um, so we do have time for a few questions. So uh, again, we invite the students to ask questions. So Ivan is a pretty senior student, but we can still allow him to ask a question. If there are younger students, I would be glad to leave my place. But it's too late. I guess it's too late, Ivan. Go. Yeah, so I, I, I'll rush through my list. So the Sklianian algebra depends at least on Q. Does you have to fix A, B, C, D also to specify a given algebra? Okay, A, B, C, D don't the, the, those para, those are the param. If I understand your question well, those par, those are parameters of the ASCII-Wilson polynomial. So so the so I wanted to relate uh, to. Uh, the polynomials to a representation of the Sklianian algebra. The okay, representation so the Sklianian algebra depends on the one parameter is the Q. Yes. Okay. And is it semi-simple all the time for any value of Qs or it changes oh, structure? That's a, that's a question I don't know. Good question. I don't know. Okay. You don't even know if uh, two different value of Qs would lead to isomorphic algebra. No, you see, I, you see, in fact, I, I don't believe that uh, uh, the representations uh, have been studied much. That's my impression. I, I, I uh, you know, I, I came recently to that, but I've looked when we found, for instance, the uh, finite dimensional representation to be given by these para polynomials, we, and I could not find a paper on finite dimensional representation. For, uh, for example, well, that was my second question. So you told us that um, when you fix n, you fix nu in terms of a, b, c, d. So suppose that you were asked to uh, to make a whole list of the i reps for a given q. So there would be the dimension of the representation that would be one factor, probably the the nu that fixes the new. But are all the A, B, C, D are still free? And no, no, no. Uh, so, so I'll backtrack. I'll comment. Right? You, it, it's bound to be quite interesting. And if someone knows, uh, please let me know. The, the literature must be richer. But, but, but I, I doubt it a little bit. So, okay, uh, I, I've explored it, and I know that there's been a lot of recent activities in connection with this classification of moduli space for uh, super string theory. Uh, and the, you know, the algebraists are beginning to classify the representation. But you know, just to comment, that uh, it has as a contraction UQSL2. So you have at least all the, the richness of the UQSL2 and this question when Q is a root of unity and so on, we will uh, we'll bear on that. But, but even, I mean, suppose that Q is not a root of unity, you seem to have quite a, a bit of a, a, more B, representation of a given dimension. A, B, C, D um, is 
you see, you, you need to have this connection. A, the product of A, B, C, D is related to new. Correct, By, but it's only their product. That's yep. the, like a three-dimensional variety, manifold of representation. Yep. It's a huge set of IRMs. Okay. And do they break up when you restrict to Sclean uh, entry? I don't know. I, I'm glad to get all these questions. Uh, you have, uh, no, I don't know. Okay. So I'll, I'll leave my place to younger students. But, but uh, you should, you should uh, I, I think this is interesting uh, and you should reflect uh, in, uh, on, on this question. Well, okay, so just, uh, I'm sorry, one more question, really the last. So when you lose the raising and lowering operator when you restrict to his, his scanning tree, is that correct? Uh, yes. So are these tape, I mean, when you act with ACD on the given representation, you don't change the degree of the polynomials or what? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, a, C, no, you uh, you can do, uh, lower. C will will lower. Okay. And, and the dimensions are the. I mean, you have a raising and lowering operator, so you can. Um, do you have a if you, is new fixing the dimension of the representation, or it's only fixing the amount of time that the raising operator won't, will be non-zero. Well, uh, what's the dimension of the representation with a given new? If new is uh, not uh, an integer, it's infinite dimensional. Yeah, but if it's the, I think you had new equal two n plus one, is n the dimension or n two n? Dimension. N, n dimension. N is the dimension. dimension. Okay, thank you. So if we don't have other, oh yes, there is uh, Mr. Fabio, please. <laughs> Hi, hello. Thank you for the talk. Uh, so I'm a physicist. So most of the things you, you told it's new for me. So sorry if my question is too basic, but I was wondering because you mentioned three term recurrence relations. If these Hoyne operators are related to Hoyne equations in in, function, in terms of function differential equations, because when you try to find series solutions, you also have three term recursion relations, right? So do you know if there is any relation of this algebra with Hoyne functions? Okay, so that, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. The reason why we called these, uh, these operators Horn operators is because when you apply, if you apply what I've said, but to the special case of the Jacobi polynomial, so the hypergeometric, which are eigenfunctions of the hypergeometric operator, either the raising condition or the bispectral approach, this gives you exactly the Oin operator. And as you've I think you, what you're alluding to is that the Hoyn operator is three diagonal on Jacobi polynomials. It will satisfy, if you expand a Hoyn solution on the Jacobi polynomial, you will get three term recurrence relation. So you have the analog of that, but the, the concept is extended to not only uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, seg the, the, the segment from zero to one, or minus one to one, but also you know any type of grids you want, and so the, the same ideas are prevailing. If I expand the hoyn hahn operator, I can just take the Hahn polynomials over Hahn polynomials. It will satisfy three-term uh, recurrence relation and so on. So this extends the idea of, but then the the what I don't know how to answer is uh, how do you transpose the singularity analysis of these operators in 
a discrete or Q discrete situation that that we have not really looked at, which is the usual way in which Hoyne operators are defined as the operate the, the differential equation of four regular uh, singularities. That this is not the uh, the angle that we are taking, but it's an interesting thing to uh, reflect on. We have not done that. Right. Yeah, that, that's why I was asking about Q going to one because th this would be some kind of quantum uh, yeah. quote quantum structure. So yes, yes. So so maybe when you take limit, I don't know if Q or Z, and A B C D would be like the monodromies of the Hoyle operator, maybe because you also have and because in the, in the theory of hypergeometric no, 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 functions. No, no. So, no, because uh, the monodromy are more likely to be connected to uh, the parameters that arise. You know, when I try diagonalize or when I take my most general, my Billinger combination, you see, I have two spectral operators, L and X, and I take a bilinear combination. So I have, this is where the monodromy parameters will arise. In the, com in the combination of these bilinear terms, not mm -hmm. in the inherent parameters of the bispectral operators. And so this is why the Ask Hoyne Askey Wilson operator is very rich. Uh, ju just to give you an example, when, when you build the standard Hoyne operator, you have two parameters because you, you take this combination, right? Uh, it's difficult to do in the abstract, but. Lx commutator, Lx anti-commutator, L and X linear. A priori you have four parameters, but the, the commutator, you have, there's a global parameter that you can get rid of because it's not important. And then the commutator, you also, it doesn't matter because it would give you an operator of lower degree. So you drop that term. So you're left with two parameters coming from these coefficients that when you're building the Hoyne operator and you have the two parameters alpha and beta of the Jacobi polynomial. And these combine together to give you your holonomy parameters of the Hoyne equation. So, so the picture will get much you know, complex if you use the four parameters of the Askey-Wilson. Okay. But, but, it, but it, do you see some scenario where we could recover the usual classical point? Um, yeah, I have not tried. It, 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 there should be some contraction. It should be possible. Often these limits are quite uh, delicate and to the point that we have, have often preferred to repeat the computation of these operators, not by taking the limit, but by, so for instance, you can re do it for the Raka polynomials per se, not the Q Raka. This is already mm -hmm. simplifying your life because you just uh, need to pass to a, a continuum limit. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, there's a the whole coalescence uh, scheme that you could uh, develop. And this is certainly of interest. These operators are uh, also from a, uh, from a uh, quantum integrable viewpoint. They are Inozemsev type of uh, Hamiltonian, which are known to be uh, completely integrable also. So these, these Oin operators are interesting also to do some um, integrable model uh, studies. So the, the integrable model that you uh, Maybe just, okay. maybe, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay. Maybe, so I mean, you can continue talking, but maybe I'll just uh, okay. thank Lick for the, the talk and, and uh, the discussion. And uh, we all thank Lick and people who want to listen, please obviously stay. I encourage you to continue talking, but others who might want to leave uh, since it's a quarter to five. Right? Thank you very much, Dirk. So Fabio, you can Pleasure. resume your question. I didn't want to interrupt. Thanks, Lick. Take care. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask uh, about the quantum integrable models. What would be like these integrable models? Where they come from? Some spin chain or something? Do you know about the Inno 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 They they are. It's like a Calogero model associated to BCN. Okay. And and the 
but then you need to look at the two particle model because it's a one variable equation so it's a rather simple model because another very important question is how to define these operator in higher dimensions okay, and, but and this is in this is uh, what, what the uh, the main uh, connection uh, to uh, between integrable Hamiltonians, many particle uh, quantum Hamiltonians, and Hoyne equations. Okay. And, and the, the supersymmetric models you mentioned are n equal to 2. Do, do you remember the moduli space of vacuum that you mentioned? Uh, no, it's really uh, n equal 4 supersymmetric Yang Mills. OK, n equal 4. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all for uh, coming and listening. Thank you very much, Luke. Sure. So long now. Have a nice evening. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Bye.